Welcome to IWC Chef and Talks to James Marsden. We're delighted to have you here. Oh, thank you. I'm um, happy to be here. I thought that perhaps, you know, audiences will know you best, perhaps as a, as a superhero in X-Men. Uh, as a child, were you a superhero obsessed kid? And if so, would Cyclops have stood a chance or what kind of guys were you aspiring to be? Well, I think it's just uh, an innate thing as a boy to be uh, a fan of superheroes. Yes, the answer is yes. I was um, Spider-Man, Superman. I wasn't that familiar with X-Men, to be honest. Sorry, X-Men X -Men <laughs> fans. But... I had played the video game and, and uh, seen some of the comics, so I knew who they were, but I wasn't, you know, I grew up with Richard Donner's Superman and um, some of the other comic book films, but, so I knew, I knew, I knew who they were, but um, I had to call on from some of my um, sort of nerdy comic book friends and say, who's, who's Cyclops and what does he do? He's, you got booked as the role and you don't even know who he is? Okay, you read this one, read episode this, read that. Um, but I think it's every childhood dream to... Uh, Every kid's dream to be a, to play a superhero. You think you're a superhero when you're a kid. You know, you dress as them for Halloween, and I remember jumping off the roof of my house onto a trampoline, thinking I could fly. It was a terrible idea. <laughs> Did not work out very well. But uh, but yeah, it's as an actor, these are those dream roles where you you get to fulfill that childhood fantasy for sure. I mean, obviously, as a superhero, you have specialist skills. But does it also take particular skills to? To play one. I mean, I'm interested in the fact that, that in your career, you know, two of your major roles, one has been as a sort of sentient android mm -hmm. um, in uh, Westworld, and, and then the other, of course, in X-Men. And yet, it seems to me that the key to both of these parts is to play them as human as possible. Well, that's, yeah, that's the idea. I, yeah, eventually I'll play just a normal person in a film. I'm realizing that <laughs> there's a whole lot of science fiction I've been involved with. Um, yeah, I, the funniest thing that I remember is the first day of shooting on the first X-Men film, we were in our full leather one-piece suits. That, nice. And um, we were meant to, me and Hallie and Hugh, were meant to leap over this, in a very superhero way, over this wall around the Statue of Liberty. And they said, action, and none of us could get over the wall because <laughs> we were just in these suits. And it was, <laughs> we couldn't have looked less like superheroes. Um, but yes, I guess from an actor's perspective, it's we you always approach it with conviction and uh, with the with the logic that this is real, and you treat these like real human beings, and and um, and I think that's what that's what adds the sort of gravity to the material. You know, we were the first, um, the X Men films were the first movies to really take it seriously and and uh, and explore the the philosophies and important themes that are that are very human, I guess. So. Um, yeah, you can't get too campy or kitschy with the whole thing. We've, we've talked about a, a, a couple of your roles, but the thing that really seems to define your career, you know, if you look at it as a whole, is, is diversity. I mean, you, you've, you've played comedy, you've played indie movies, you, you've sung, you know, you've played the, 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 the robots and you've played superheroes. So is that something to do with a kind of a decision on your part, a determination on your part not to be kind of typecast as the handsome leading man, which you could surely <laughs> Also, have gone down the the road of. Or yeah, I think it was. It became a choice, um, but I think a common misconception in, uh, about Hollywood is that you always have the choice to do whatever you want. When you're young and starting out, you just take whatever comes your way <laughs> because you have to balance your sort of creative uh, and artistic integrity with paying a mortgage. So whatever scripts come your way, like oh, I can do that, and whether it's a comedy or a drama or a uh, an action film or a science fiction or whatever. Um, but then as I look back at some of my choices and some of the ones that were more successful, uh, I started to notice that um, I was, I'd been afforded the ability to jump from genre to genre. And it's one of the great, um, one of the great things about being an actor is to be able to not stay in one genre or play the same role over and over again. And I feel like that was always something that was a strength of mine. It was um, um, that I, that I could do comedy or that I could do a drama as well or do an action film and and, um, and sometimes Hollywood doesn't let you do that. They, they, find, they find something that you know the world wants to see you as and they only cast you in those roles and I, I over time once I sort of established myself I made it a point to um, diversify I guess. And is there is there a, a kind of role that you are sort of desperate to play that you haven't yet had the chance to do? Um, that's always a good question. I guess my uh, I guess my my way of looking at choosing what my next job is is to 
kind of see where I just came from. So if I just came from doing, let's say, Anchorman 2, very silly kind of romp um, comedy, I will then have a new appetite to do something maybe dramatic. Um, but as far as like the perfect role or something I haven't done yet, I mean, I always enjoyed doing the musicals. That was something that um, I feel like we could always do um, a lot more of. And there's very few out there, but a, a film like La La Land coming out now is just a testament to people wanting to see those types of films. So when I did Hairspray and when I did Enchanted, people loved seeing you enjoy yourself being an actor. And uh, I would love to go back to that and do something like that, whether it's in film or on Broadway. Um, I'd love to do a biopic. Um, like Frank Sinatra was always uh, a hero of mine growing up, and that's a role that I would uh, love to play at some point. Um, that, that way you can incorporate all your skills of like singing and, and uh, an incredible, incredibly rich uh, story of a human being, of a, of a superstar. Um, but yeah, that's something I haven't played, is actually like a real, a real human being, aside from a, <laughs> a few days of playing John F. Kennedy on The Butler, but you know. And very good you were too. Oh, thank you. Brief, but yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm surprised. I'm very disappointed, actually, as a British person, that, that period drama isn't in there because obviously we'd like to see you in Jumpers, you know. And, and oh, yeah, that's another one I've, I've not been given the opportunity to do as well, is that, like a period drama. Um, but I guess my periods were 1960s in Hairspray or like in, in The Butler, like I said, but go way back to like Elizabethan. <laughs> I've never done that. I don't know that people would... Rhyming necessarily buy me in that sort of role. This is like American stepping into. Um, yeah, it'd be fun to actually do. Yeah, do that. Step in, do a full on English accent. That'd be fun. No, oh, yeah. I'm dying to hear it. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. But not yeah. now. Okay, you, good. Unless yeah. you want to. Uh, no, no, no. I don't. <laughs> I need to practice first. <laughs> and you know, you, you've worked a lot in television, obviously, a, a lot now in in film as well. Um, is theatre still compelling, or or did? Do, do those two genres kind of eclipse theatre because you well, know, I've get never, treated better? Well, yeah, yeah you, I mean, you, stage requires a discipline that uh, is not necessarily required in, in film and television in that, one, you can screw up and, and do it again. On film, on stage, you, you have to roll with it, you know. Um, it's compelling. I, I love the idea of being on the stage, but it's absolutely terrifying as well, and I think that's one of the things that make it uh, exciting. Um, I've, I've kind of I've toyed with the idea of, of doing a show on Broadway for a long time. Um, I have three kids, so it's been difficult to uproot myself from Los Angeles and then go, you know, because you have to be in, in New York or wherever uh, for a good period of time. Um, but it is something I want to do. I just want to find the right uh, project to do, whether it's a play or a musical. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. I haven't been properly on stage since maybe high school. So there's something in the back of my mind thinking like, ooh, that's, uh, that's scary. I wonder how you'll <laughs> feel on that first night. Well, everyone that I know, like Hugh Jackman um, and even Patrick Stewart, who will be here today, uh, they were always encouraging me to, to, to do some uh, stage and musicals, things like that. In fact, Hugh talked to me about when he did Boy From Oz. He asked if, I would, if it would be interesting to me to play his lover in Boy From Oz. And... I think I was busy at the time. Of, I'd, I'd booked this, uh, another movie or something, so I couldn't do it. But I was entertaining the idea of like being on stage actually with you, which would be fun. It's an offer you can't refuse to play Hugh Jackman's lover. Yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I do my best to do that in my real life. I mean, this is not accepting. <laughs> Um, this is when the rumors yeah. start. <laughs> this is the bit they'll cut <laughs> out. Perpetuating rumors here. <laughs> yeah, because then there's the Anthony Hopkins... Yeah. scenes aren't there as well but we won't go there now <laughs> oh you can go there it's fine I think if, if you've seen those scenes with me and Anthony in Westworld you realize that uh, you know uh, I'll do anything really um, as an actor you have to have the you have to have the courage to sort of go there if you believe in the material there's a scene in Westworld where I'm virtually not virtually pretty much 100% nude sitting opposite him as he's um, questioning me and it was one of the most surreal moments you know you always have these moments on set as an actor like whether it's what you're wearing, if you're wearing a ridiculous outfit, or you're covered in blood, or you know, just find yourself in these strange situations, and you kind of think, well, this is what I get paid to do for a living, and yeah, it's 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 glorious in some ways, and sometimes you think, okay, now I I feel like I've lost a bet. I'm naked opposite Anthony Hopkins, having to <laughs> act with him for a good three or four pages, but I embrace it. I I just I think um, the more surreal, the more the more interesting for me as an actor. You go home to your three kids and think, I wish I could be as mature as them. <laughs> All, every day. Every day. Um, now the torturous bit. Ten questions in oh, one sure, minute. Let's do it. Are you 
Are I can't you ready? I'll be able to answer every one of them. Deep so. breath. No, don't worry. I mean, it, it's my idea of stammering. torture. I feel very bad. I feel quite sadistic putting you through yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Pick one. Nevertheless. Sadistic or bad? <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's go. I think the clock is ready. So we've got one minute to answer ten questions. <clears throat> Starting with uh, my advice to up and coming actors is. My advice to up-and-coming actors is uh, persistence, uh, um, perseverance. Um, stick with it if you love it. Um, do it in any shape or form. Stage, find an acting class, anything. It's all about staying at the table and, and, and keeping those, those muscles uh, toned, I guess. Is that toned? Like, <laughs> so those acting muscles toned. <laughs> We're going yes. back to the Anthony Hopkins yes. scene now. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, I can't stop talking about it. <laughs> if I'd not become an actor, I would have been... Uh, out of work. <laughs> I would have been, uh, I probably would have uh, pursued a music career, I think. I would never leave my house without. Um, my IWC watch. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Which is actually Tick. true. It's actually very true, that statement. My biggest indulgence is? Chocolate and peanut butter. Oh, nice. <laughs> Is it, is it, was that a food That's specific okay. question? Or, no, or, okay. but food is good. That's where your mind went. Food is good. Okay. Chocolate okay. and peanut butter. We like bad it. for me that I indulge me. Yeah. Yeah. One item <clears throat> I'd bring to a desert island is? <clears throat> item I'd bring to a desert island. Um, that's a great, um, my iPhone. <laughs> I was going to think, I was thinking I would do radio, so yeah. Yeah, I'd yeah, but that would make radio. more sense because I guess you wouldn't have any power. Well, you can do on it on your iPhone island. or radio now, so you know, you, you've got everything there. Right, your you music. just need to make sure you have a massive battery pack to bring with you. Yeah, maybe yeah. the battery pack is the more uh, essential. I would bring a, um, a boat with me to a deserted <laughs> island. How about that? One superpower you'd <clears throat> like to have that you haven't already been imbued with? Um, teleportation. Love to not, I'd love to avoid airports. That'd be nice, right? Just boom, boom. Yep, look here, I'm in Geneva. Look, Everyone's I'm dream. back home, right. My worst fear is? Um, my worst fear, I have three kids and I, I them staying healthy, being healthy, le leading a healthy lifestyle um, and creating that good um, example for them. I guess, I don't know, just my kids being healthy. Well, <clears throat> I have got flats or heels here, but I've also got tuxedos or sweatpants, so you can take your pick. Well, I'm an actor, so you can, uh, you can probably ask both. I'm sure I've played some role where I was in heels. Uh, what was the men's version of that? Tuxedo or sweatpants. Tuxedo or sweatpants. Both have their places, but um, if you're talking about uh, what I, the, the majority of what I wear, I would say 99% of the time I'm in sweats, yeah. This very, isn't very rapid fire, is it? <laughs> this is very slow fire, I think it's fair to say. Okay. But nevertheless, it's very entertaining. <clears throat> We've you. reached our minute, haven't we? <laughs> We've uh, reached our minute with James Marsden. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. IWC today. Thank you.